Hey guys, uh, welcome to another screencast in OpenShift. So if you've been following this series of installation of OpenShift, by now you will notice that we've gone um, quite far. Uh, we've kind of activated our cartridges, we've created uh, a sample users, we've tested the different ways to kind of um, customize a user with different capabilities. Um, so here what I want to do is I want to kind of um, show you one cool thing you can do. Um, on the if I go to the OpenShift uh, console, uh, which I'm logged in as the OpenShift user, uh, and you go to click Create Applications, you will see we already have an existing list of our cartridges from the previous video. And one thing you can also do, uh, in addition to that, is um, you know where you have instant applications, instant apps. Um, these are kind of uh, different applications that kind of uh, are tweaked to work with the different um, uh, environment variables for you know your you know your OpenShift implementation. So um, just to show you how easy it is to add your own entry here, um, I have a quick start on the OpenShift.com uh, quick starts page, and once this page loads, you uh, anyway. Um, this is a place I recommend you go to for quick starts. Uh, I love folks in the community have been creating um, cool quick starts that um, allows you to quickly scaffold an application and um, kind of move up from there. So the the one I want to show you here is, um, anyway, let me just give you an example because I already have it documented. Uh, the Laravel 4.1 quick start, um, I did this some uh, couple of, uh, some times back. So, um, you know, have documentation on how to create this and you know, different applications type. Um, one thing I do have here is uh, an entry for Laravel uh, in the on the broker the quick starts to JSON file. Um, so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to kind of paste this and uh, kind of uh, sort of reorganize it to. So we're going to call this uh, 4.1 and uh, instead of 4.5 and 5. I'm going to make it uh, give us an option to pick the type uh, that we want to pick, and uh, hopefully this will make sense. Uh, so I'm just going to go into our broker and go into the OpenShift directory. So here you will see the quick starts uh, the JSON file. So I'm going to go ahead and tweak that. And you can see different entries for different quick starts uh, Django, Drupal, Ruby on Rails, uh, WordPress. And um, the ones I want, the one I want to add here is uh, add a comma and paste our own implementation or you know our own uh, quick starts. So just paste it here and. Uh, Yeah, so uh, this should allow us add out an entry. Um, the ID I'm putting here is 10, and give it any name. Um, of course, uh, you can see the entry here if you want. So once you do this, um, just to be sure, you can um, clear the cache for the broker. And Once the cache has been cleared, uh, you can go ahead and uh, this might not be necessary, but I'm just doing it for you know uh, completeness. And uh, if I refresh my application types now, uh, well, uh, can't find Laravel, which is weird. Okay, so um, I have to take a different approach. Uh, okay, uh, the cache has been cleared. Okay. I'm waiting for it to complete. All right, so uh, if it still doesn't show, uh, you know, we can go ahead and. Uh, 
troubleshoot this some more and uh one of the best places to go to uh is the open shift console uh, page here in the temp directory in cache uh well we do have some cache here so i'm just going to go ahead and clear that and uh let's refresh again all right, so uh, sometimes you have to do this uh, this step here. Uh, just note where I went to uh, inside the part of the OpenShift console uh, temp cache directory. Uh, by the time you clean up everything, it will generate the cache content. Um, yeah, so basically you can see we have the Laravel 4.1 um, appearing here. Uh, if you click on this, you can see it allows you to pick the different uh, version of PHP and MySQL, and you can see here that it's loading a git. Uh, URL which will go ahead and scaffold the application and of course um, of course you can scale the web part of the application and you know come integrated so it does not receive automatic updates of course all right so um, yeah you can see uh, how easy it is to add you know your own entry to the uh, application list also we can um, kind of uh, go ahead and uh, create an example application so let's call this our php app and let's just use this mode here and of course you're going to use the php 5 for cartridge now what i want to show you uh a cool stuff here is you can uh, you can see how uh, openshift uh, kind of does this thing uh here i have just two nodes so uh each node corresponds to a different uh, gear profile um so uh what what that means is uh uh, if I uh, view the log for the node for node one and node two, uh, you, you can see how smart the um, you can see how smart that is, uh, the broker is to select the node that has a particular profile and then um, allows it to keep in the job. So, for instance, um, once I do this and I click create application uh, and I switch back to you know um, uh, node one. You see that, uh, yeah. So you see that uh, the job has kicked in. I uh, can see um, the job kicking in and creating all the different applications. Uh, this is on node one. Uh, so because this corresponds to the small profile uh, which we have here, uh, if we had selected the medium profile, then of course you would have seen it uh, create a, uh, you'd have seen it create the application in the um, uh, in node two uh, as well. So uh, as you can see, it has created the application here. Uh, we can go ahead and the clone, uh, you know, the application and pull it down locally. So uh, we have some other screencasts for this, for different ways of using the OpenShift installation. So, but for now, um, you know, I just want to show you an example. So, right, we have an OpenShift demo directory, and uh, I'm going to paste the command for the git clone. Uh, just go ahead and scaffold it. Okay, so you can see uh, we have a PHP app application, um, and of course you can go ahead and use Git to manage it and push it to the upstream uh, if you want. So here we click and continue to the application overview page. All right, so you can see uh, this page uh, should be familiar uh, because we're using the small gear. You can see the one gigabyte uh, that we configured earlier. Uh, you can see here we can embed different cartridges. Uh, you can see you can select the different gears, uh, of course. So here, if you want the application to scale, uh, of course, you can specify the dash dash scale option or just the dash s option when using the rc command uh, create app command. Or, um, of course, the size here, you can see that the gear size has one gigabyte. Uh, if you're using the online edition, um, Red Hat has made some tweaks to allow you to change or upgrade your, your kind of your storage or your plan, if you will. Uh, so anyway, but uh, I think for now that's all and what we can do here is also Red Hat allows us to kind of uh, Use a custom domain name here at the point to application. So instead of giving the calling it php app dash oo app model local uh, of course you can give it www.phpapp.com um, for instance, and of course you can get an SSL certificate and add, add it to our account if you will All right so your account does not allow custom SSL certificates, of course, but we need to specify that. So the moment we specify that, of course, it allows us to embed an, uh, an SSL certificate for this app. 
discuss so you can SSH into the application and uh, this is the next thing I'll show you uh, right within the command uh, tool uh, command window I can just SSH into the application and you can see right now I've SSH into the PHP app application and of course um, you know I'm logging right into the gear of course and uh, in the PHP directory here you can see that uh, we have uh, different uh, part of the application uh, used to scaffold uh, so but what I want to check is the app root uh, directory here uh, repo all right so um, the repo is exactly what we have uh, what we're seeing right now that we've cloned I can see we have index that's uh, PHP uh, in this case and um, one thing I'll show you also is the extensive use of environment variables from uh, that's from OpenShift so you can see that uh, we have quite a number of uh, that's quite a number of environment variables uh, in this case you can see that the gem home is set to the gem uh, the history file home directory uh, you can see the custom uh, you can see the custom uh, you know uh, You can see like the OpenShift app DNS, which is a custom environment variable, uh, like app name. You can see the SSH key, the public key, the app UUID. Uh, you can see the auto deploy option I uh, set to true. You can see the broker. Uh, of course, if you have any dependencies, it will be built uh, directly. Uh, you can see the OpenShift data directory. Um, isn't that? So what this means is in your application, you can go ahead and use any of these environment variables for the values. So, for instance, uh, here you can see, and in this case here, you can see that uh, uh, our gear DNS is set to this value here. Uh, our gear memory here, in this case, is set to 512 megabyte uh, because we're using a small uh, gear profile. And um, you know, you can see that uh, the PHP IP address, the IP address of the application here, uh, is set to this, of course, and of course. Um, you know the port is set to 8080 and uh, you know it has been hardwired behind the scenes to kind of give you this uh, easy look here you can see the temporary directory uh, of course you can see the PHP in e scan directory um, it's for PHP so you can use it to activate uh, different modules if you want and um, you know, for instance, uh, you can see the primary cartridge directory and the PHP version here we have is 5.4 because that's what we installed. Uh, different variable actually. So um, if you, uh, of course, if we, if we had created a, a database cartridge, uh, it will go ahead and give us the credentials for the database from the host to the user to the password to, uh, to the port and all that. So you can go ahead and use it in your application. Um, and then of course, instead of hard coding the values, you can uh, use it as if, you know, um, you know you can easily ask if um, you know if the value has you've gotten the value from somewhere else meanwhile uh, OpenShift has created the necessary um, you know environment variables for you all right so with this uh, we wrap up this screencast uh, hopefully this made this made sense you've seen how uh, easy it is to kind of uh, play with the environment variables uh, you can see how easy it is to add you know the uh, like your custom uh, entry in your OpenShift uh, installation uh, you know like, like we did here of course you can go ahead and create different applications based on the Java, PHP, Ruby, um, Node, Python um, you name it so it, it, a lot of um, stuff you can go ahead and actually add more into this um, you know more into these applications uh, you can see see all in this case and you can see different types, different stuff you can see the description and you can see different um, you know um, that's just different uh, keywords, if you like, for you know this instant apps. All right, so if you have any questions, comments, please drop them in the forums uh, comment box below, and of course uh, you will uh, uh, I'll get back to you in the way I can uh, in my free time. Uh, but uh, please feel free to experiment with this. Um, I've been playing with OpenShift since, and I must tell you that I'm really impressed, and uh, I don't see myself going back. Uh, if I really need a pass system, um, OpenShift is the way to go. Uh, I haven't played with other uh, implementations, but for now, I like what I see. And um, if you like me, uh, I've been a strong believer of uh, Red Hat. I've used so many of Red Hat's products. Uh, in this case, 
uh, I'm using CentOS. Uh, that's because uh, you know I have CentOS installed locally, but you, you get my point. All right, so um, hope hope you like this one, and uh, see you in um, future videos. Uh, thanks a lot.